What is your image of a king? Maybe you imagine a crown or a scepter or perhaps a long train. Maybe a person who people bow to as he is wearing the crown in this long train holding the scepter. Maybe you are calling to mind specific royal figures throughout history, some who are famous for being good and just and others infamous because of their corrupt ways. Regardless of how we image this royalty, these kings of past, today we're invited by the church to honor a king who is certainly the most unique. And yes, throughout history, Christ the King is depicted through art. Often that art has Jesus holding the scepter, the crown, sitting on the throne, perhaps with royal or majestic garb. But as beautiful as these images of the eternal king truly is, Jesus Christ as king is presented in a very different light, especially as we read and hear proclaimed today the gospel from Luke chapter 23. This passage clearly contradicts our notion of any earthly king. Our king today is portrayed as powerless and near death as he is reviled and mocked, nailed to the wood in the same fashion as common criminals would have been according to Roman custom in the day. So it may appear strange that for this solemnity, the church calls us to reflect on this specific account found in Luke while inviting us to observe such a glorious feast. But I think that's the point of today's message. A king who, while literally dying for the sake of his people, offers the repentant thief something no other royalty could ever promise. Jesus did not promise to remove the repentant thief from the cross, nor did Jesus promise that he would be spared death. No, he did not promise either of these things, but rather, Christ promises the repentant thief that he would be with him in paradise that very day. Not even death would destroy the power of Christ's eternal reign, for this king rules over all things in heaven and on earth. What a consolation, isn't it? As Christ promises the repentant thief the gift of paradise, this same benevolent king continually offers us the gift of mercy. And we pray that whatever past injuries or personal sin that has thrust misery upon us, our prayer remains the same, that through the grace of this solemn feast, that we may truly experience that invitation that everyone with us today embraces the tender compassion that Christ freely extends to every single person so that we may dwell with him in a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. As we come to the conclusion of this extraordinary year of jubilee, this year of mercy, may Christ the King be proclaimed throughout the universe where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.